Hi everyone, this is Maverick Poa, the chemistry guru. Now this is my first video for 2019 and I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all my viewers a very happy and fruitful 2019. Now personally, I am looking forward to this year very much. It's going to be a very exciting year for me and I hope that I can continue to produce quality weekly video lessons that I can share with all of you. So without further ado, let's start with the first weekly video lesson for Chemistry Guru. Now in the topic of alkanes, when we run through the mechanism of free radical substitution, sometimes we do encounter questions which require us to predict the number of mono substituted products when a particular alkane undergoes free radical substitution. So in this video, we want to spend some time to discuss how do we determine the number of mono substituted products for free radical substitution. We also want to predict the expected ratio of these products. So the discussion is here, how do we determine the number of monochloroalkane products for free radical substitution? So we are using monochloroalkane as an example. Of course, if I'm doing bromination or other halogenation of alkanes, effectively the technique it is exactly the same. So we will use two examples one involving butane, the other example involving 2-methyl butane. So now let's look at the first example involving butane. Now, if you're given butane and I'm doing chlorination for butane in the presence of UV light, I know that free radical substitution would take place. If I want to predict the total number of monochloroalkanes, that means the mono substituted products that can be formed, how do we go about doing that? Now, butane is here. It is just a four carbon straight chain alkane. The first thing we need to do is we want to determine how many different types of carbon is there in butane. So what we can do is we can make use of symmetry to try to determine how many different types of carbon that we have. So since butane is four carbon long, and actually we notice that it is symmetrical, what I can do is I can draw this mirror plane here right at the center, then you notice there's a mirror image, right? I know that this carbon and this carbon, actually it is a mirror image of each other. Then this CH2 carbon and this CH2 carbon is also a mirror image of each other. So what this means is how many different types of carbon do we have here? Actually, I only have one type of carbon. So I will name this carbon type one. And this metal carbon is exactly the same as this metal carbon because it is a mirror image. So this methyl carbon would also be carbon type one. Then this CH2 carbon, it is a carbon type two. And since this CH2 carbon, it is a mirror image of this guy. So this carbon would also be a type two. In this case, we notice that I have two different types of carbon, or we have two different carbons in two different chemical environments. So if I have a substitution at carbon position one, then I'll end up with one product. And I have one substitution that occurs at carbon position two, then I'll have a second product. So if I have a substitution that is occurring at this particular carbon, since this is a carbon type two, the product that I'm ending with will be exactly the same as the free radical substitution involving this particular carbon. So similarly, if I have a free radical substitution occurring at this carbon, since this carbon is also a type 1, the product that I'm getting will also be exactly the same as the free radical substitution involving this carbon because these two carbons are identical. So substitution that occurs at these two position will be exactly the same. And since these two carbons are identical, so free radical substitution that occurs at these two carbon, the product will also be the same. So this idea is useful because you notice what we can do is I can predict the total number of products that can be formed and I actually don't really need to draw the product. Of course, it is useful for MCQ. Sometimes I just want to predict the total number of products that can be formed. Then there isn't a real need for us to draw the products. But for this example, I think it is good for us to do that. How many different monochloroalkanes am I expected to get? So let's look at the first case. If I do a free radical substitution at carbon position one, I substitute any of this hydrogen here, then the expected product would look something like this. 
So you notice this will be the product. The chloro group will be on carbon position one. So this is one of the product. Actually, this is just my one chloro butane. Now the second product is if I have a substitution occurring at carbon position two, then the expected product will actually look something like this. All right, so this will be the second product where the Cl is attached to position two. So this will be two chloro butane. Then as mentioned previously, if I'm doing a substitution at this carbon, since this is carbon position 2, the product that I'll end up with will be exactly the same as this guy, 2-chlorobutane. And if I'm doing a substitution at this carbon here, then you end up as this product here, 1-chlorobutane. Now the next thing that we want to figure out is, now that I know that I can form two different products, can I predict the ratio of products? Now the ratio of products that I'm expected to get that means what is the expected ratio of 1-chlorobutane to 2-chlorobutane. Now what we need to focus on will just be the number of CH for each type of carbon. So this is based on the assumption that for butane, for example, I have so many hydrogen. If I go and count all together, I will have 10 hydrogen. And the assumption is the probability of substitution and each of these hydrogen is exactly the same. So the chances of free radical substitution occurring at this hydrogen, and this hydrogen, and this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and so on, all the hydrogen have equal probability or equal likelihood of being substituted. So based on this very simple assumption, then what we can do is we can just purely based on probability, I can deduce the expected ratio. So let's run through this. If I consider this particular product, how do I get 1-chlorobutane? Now, if I want to get 1-chlorobutane, then in terms of substitution, out of 10 hydrogen or out of so many hydrogen, when I do a substitution at this position, I'll end up with 1-chlorobutane. If I do a substitution involving this hydrogen, I'll end up with 1-chlorobutane. If I do a substitution at this hydrogen, I'll end up with the same product. Actually, this idea is quite easy to pick up, right? Because since this is carbon type 1, then all this CH will be identical. So if I do a substitution at this hydrogen, or this hydrogen, or this hydrogen, it will give me the same product. I'll end up with 1-chlorobutane. Similarly, I noticed that for carbon position 1, I have another carbon, which is this carbon, with another 3 hydrogen. So if I do a substitution, at this position, and this hydrogen, and this hydrogen, I'll end up with the same product, I'll end up with 1-chlorobutane. So what this means is, out of a total of 10 hydrogen, if I do a substitution involving all these 6 hydrogen, any one of them, I'll end up with 1-chlorobutane. So the probability of this thing happening, or the probability of me getting 1-chlorobutane will be 6 out of 10 times 6 hydrogen out of a total of 10 hydrogen, I'll end up with product number 1, 1 chlorobutane. So this is just purely based on probability. I think it's quite easy for us to pick up. Now, how about 2 chlorobutane? If I want to form 2 chlorobutane, then the hydrogen that is to be substituted will be on carbon position 2, right? This hydrogen, substitute this hydrogen, or substitute this hydrogen as well as this hydrogen. That means if I do a substitution involving this four hydrogen, then I'll end up with two chlorobutane. So the probability of me forming this guy will just be four out of 10 times. So the ratio is out already. The ratio for the product between one chlorobutane to two chlorobutane will be six is to four. Of course, if we round this off, the ratio will just be 3 is to 2. So this is the expected ratio of these two products. Again, the assumption is the probability or the chances of substitution at each of these hydrogen is exactly the same. All right, now the second example, how about 2-methylbutane? Same thing, what we want to do are two things. The first thing is I want to determine how many different types of monosubstituted product that I'm going to get. Then the second thing is, what is the expected ratio involving all these products? So if you are given 2-methylbutane, 2-methylbutane actually looks something like this. Straight chain carbon, 4-carbon, 
then position 2, I have a methyl group attached to it. So what I've done is I've drawn out all this hydrogen. So later, it is easier for us to count the hydrogen. So the first thing is, how many different types of carbon do I have for 2 methyl butane? Now previously, when we look at butane, without the presence of the methyl group, then it is symmetrical, right? So this carbon and this carbon is symmetrical. This carbon and this carbon, it is symmetrical and identical. But you notice once this methyl group is here at position 2, you actually break the symmetry for this longest chain, this 4 carbon chain. So what this means is there's no more mirror plane. So this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, all these 4 carbons would be different. So I will already have 4 different types of carbon. So let me try to put this in. This is carbon type 1, this is carbon number 2, this is carbon number 3. This guy is carbon number 4. So all these four carbons are different and I already expect a minimum of four different monochlorobutanes. Now, the next thing we want to figure out is how about this guy? How about this 2 methyl position? Now, this methyl group is attached to carbon position 2 and this methyl group is exactly the same as this methyl group which is also attached to carbon position 2. So what this means is this methyl carbon and this methyl carbon, they are in the exact same chemical environment. That means the neighbors are exactly the same or the environment or the surrounding is exactly the same. So therefore, this methyl carbon and this methyl carbon, they are the same type of carbon. So this carbon would also be type 1. So what we have here is I actually have only four different types of carbon. So therefore, I'll end up with four different monochloroalkanes. Now in this case, maybe we don't try to draw the four products because you take up too much space. I know that if I have a substitution occurring at this carbon, I'll get product number one. So maybe I'll just write this as product number one. Then if I'm doing a substitution at this carbon here, then this would be product number two. So this would be product number two. If I'm doing a substitution at this carbon number three, I'll end up with product number three. This position here, I'll end up with product number 4. Remember, if I'm doing a substitution at this carbon, because this is a methyl carbon attached to carbon position 2, which is exactly the same as this methyl carbon, because this methyl carbon is also attached to carbon position 2, these two methyl carbon are identical. If I'm doing a substitution at this guy here, the product will be exactly the same as type 1. So I only have four different products. So the number of products we have already settled them. The next thing we want to do, of course, is to determine the expected ratio of product number one, product number two, product number three, product number four. Now you notice we don't really need to draw the products to determine the ratio of these products because we are looking at the reactants and we are focusing on the number of CH for each type of carbon. So this is a very simple idea and very easy to apply. So basically what we do is, okay, which of these hydrogen, if I do a substitution out of so many hydrogen, will I get product number one? So it is just the substitution at carbon position one, right? So if I look at carbon position one, how many CH bonds do I have for carbon type one? Carbon type one, I have one hydrogen, two hydrogen, three hydrogen. Remember this is also carbon type one. So four hydrogen, five and six hydrogen. So what this means is out of all this hydrogen, if I do a substitution at this six hydrogens here, I'll end up with this product, product type 1. So the expected ratio involving this guy will be 6 hydrogen out of all the number of hydrogens that we have inside this compound. Now for product 2, the expected ratio will again focus on how many CH bonds do we have for carbon type 2. So if I look at carbon type 2, I only have 1 hydrogen. So therefore, if I'm figuring out the ratio for this guy out of so many hydrogen, if I do substitution at this hydrogen only, then I'll end up with compound number 2. So that will be the expected ratio. It will be 1 out of all the number of hydrogens that we have inside this system. Then for carbon type 3, if let's say I want to figure out what is the ratio for carbon type 3, then if I go and count the number of hydrogen, carbon type 3 has 1 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen. So the expected ratio will be 2 hydrogen out of all the number of hydrogens inside this compound. Then finally, carbon number four, I have three hydrogen, right? Because I have one hydrogen here, two hydrogen, three hydrogen here. So the expected ratio for this guy will be three. So 
you notice the ratio of the products is already out. The ratio for product number 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 will just simply be 6 is to 1 is to 2 is to 3. Now one more idea which is important that I think is good to talk about is you notice carbon type 1 it is a methyl group. Carbon type 4 is also a methyl group. So some of us might be confused. How come this is a CH3? This is also a CH3 but this CH3 and this CH3 it is different. Now, we don't focus on whether they are identical or not or they are in the same chemical environment based on what type of carbon this is. We also need to look at the neighbor that this carbon it is attached to. So if I look at carbon type 1 or if I look at this metal carbon here, this metal carbon is attached to this carbon which has only one hydrogen while this metal carbon is attached to this carbon which has two hydrogen. So you notice the neighbor between these two guys are different, right? Because this guy's neighbor is just a CH and it also has a neighboring metal group. This CH3's neighbor, it is a CH2. That means the chemical environment between this metal group and this metal group are different. So therefore, this metal carbon and this metal carbon, they are not the same or they are not identical. So we don't want to have this assumption thinking that if it is a CH3, all the CH3 are identical. Or if it is a CH2, then all the CH2 are identical. We need to consider the chemical environment and what are the groups that this particular carbon is attached to. Alright, so that was the discussion involving predicting the number of monochloroalkenes for free radical substitution. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.